SCP-1958 Magic School Bus Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures As of redacted, SCP-1958 has been placed in a stable orbit of Earth's Sun at a distance of one point redacted astronomical units and is not currently visible from the Earth by the naked eye. The Foundation is to monitor professional and amateur astronomical publications for any indication that SCP-1958 has been cited, and is to suppress any publication of information regarding its composition or trajectory. On Redacted, a three-man survey team deployed from Foundation Lunar Facility 2A was successful in reaching and entering SCP-1958, inventorying its contents, installing equipment to facilitate further monitoring, and retrieving components and artifacts deemed noteworthy. All artifacts recovered from SCP-1958 are to be archived at Reliquary 32 for further examination. SCP-1958 is to be returned to Earth if and when a suitable method for acquisition and transit is devised. Description SCP-1958 is a 1950s Volkswagen Type 2 Samba bus, often referred to as a microbus, currently located approximately one-point redacted astronomical units from the Earth's Sun in a region of interplanetary space near the orbit of Mars. Prior to the establishment of Foundation monitoring and redacted, SCP-1958 had been moving away from the Sun at a constant velocity of approximately 130 km per hour. Aside from a severed coolant line on the undercarriage and a small dent on the rear fender, SCP-1958 does not appear to have received any significant damage. The phrases Starmobile and Alpha Century or Bust have been spray-painted in English on the side panels of SCP-1958. Analysis indicates that SCP-1958's trajectory prior to Foundation contact would have placed it in the vicinity of the star Alpha Century A in approximately 37.2 million years. SCP-1958 has undergone heavy aftermarket mechanical modification. The interior cabin and engine compartment have been made airtight, with a small section near the rear doors being converted into an airlock. The original glass windows have been replaced with a shatterproof acrylic, and the exterior surfaces have been treated with an unknown chemical additive, rendering them nearly impervious to penetration by space debris. The gas tank has been replaced with a fuel cell, that appears to be based on advanced theories of Redacted, not developed until several decades after the date at which SCP-1958 is presumed to have left Earth. No modification has been made to the driver's controls or the dashboard display. During exploration, the survey team noted that the steering wheel, gas and brake pedals, and gear shift function to alter SCP-1958's speed and direction in a manner commensurate to a vehicle being driven on the Earth's surface. The following artifacts were discovered within SCP-1958's cabin upon exploration. The skeletal remains of an adult human male, approximately 21 years of age, identified as William Redacted, who was reported missing in the summer of the 1950s while attending classes at the University of California, San Francisco. The skeletal remains of one adult female domestic cat. Forensic analysis indicates the cat was pregnant at time of death. Four bedrolls and pillows. A supply of clothing and styles typical of late 1950s American youth culture for several adults of mixed gender. A partially exhausted supply of dehydrated food, remaining store sufficient to feed four adults for approximately three months. A chemical toilet and water filtration equipment intended to recycle water from urine, feces, and sweat. An atmospheric scrubbing system sufficient for removing exhaled carbon dioxide from the cabin and introducing oxygen produced as a waste product of the engine. A seed bank containing seeds from several thousand domestic plants and freeze-dried fertilized ova of several dozen livestock and domesticated animals. A water pipe containing cannabis residue. One syringe and an empty vial. Chemical analysis indicate the vial and syringe had been used in the storage and injection of heroin. Blueprints and technical diagrams relating to the modifications made to SCP-1958's engine. One acoustic guitar. One pair of bongo drums. A set of printed and handwritten star charts. The following books. Howl and Other Poems by Allen Ginsberg. On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Collected Poems, 1957-1968. 
1934 through 1952, by Dylan Thomas. Untitled songbooks containing lyrics and guitar tablature for the songs of Woody Guthrie, Pete Seeger, and Hank Williams, in addition to several original compositions. The Voyage of the Space Beagle, by A. E. Van Gogh, Jack Proton, Space Cop, by M. K. Snyder, Worlds in Collision, by Emmanuel Velosky, Dianetics, by L. Ron Hubbard, Space Brothers, A Guide to Our Galactic Next Door Neighbors, by Rev. Abraxas Honey Chili Jackson, a handwritten diary identified as belonging to William Redacted. The means by which SCP-1958 initially left the Earth's surface is unknown. An examination of police reports and newspaper archives indicate that several bright lights and sonic booms were reported by residents of San Francisco on the evening of July 4, 1950 redacted, during Independence Day fireworks displays that could not be accounted for by pyrotechnics. Redacted's former residence was demolished to make way for new construction in 1975. Surviving friends and relatives have described Redacted as a beatnik, who was active in counterculture circles and left-wing political causes, and who dabbled briefly with several new religious movements, including a transcendental meditation, the teachings of Indian mystic Mayor Baba, and the First Fifth Church of San Francisco. Excerpts from Diary of William Redacted February 3rd, Redacted Bought the bus today. We hawked pretty much everything we owned between the four of us to make the down payment. Jerry says it's perfect. Plenty of space inside for all of us, and plenty of room under the hood for the shit he's gonna need to pack in there. He says it'll be ready in a couple of months, but Susan wants to graduate before we go, so we'll probably wait until summer. Plenty of time to get everything else we need. Feels like it was only yesterday those fifth is squares kicked us out for our heresy. They laughed when I told them Jackson was wrong, that Eggers was wrong, that Rand was wrong. There's magic up there, alright? But I'm not just going to sit here working 9 to 5s and wait for it to come to us. We're going to IT. Heaven's up there, man. Just waiting for its angels. July 4th, Redacted. Blast off. First man in space. Take that, Khrushchev. Here it is. Independence Day? And for the first time in history since the man started setting up his rules and his laws and his banks, there's four people in the universe who are really free. It's so beautiful up here. The earth is getting smaller and smaller in the rearview mirror. I swear, it feels like we're barely moving at all, but Jerry says we're pulling 82 on this thing. Ain't no pigs up here gonna pull us over. He says it ought to be three weeks, four tops, before we make it to Alpha Centauri. We lit a couple up and goodbye to Mother Earth for one last time. July 7th, Redacted Would you believe we still get AM on the Motorola? Outer space is rockin', man. July 9th, Redacted We ran out of beer today. Sam cracked one open with breakfast when we noticed the rolling seven left. Four Olympia, two Rainer, one Coors. We cracked him open with lunch, even let Susan's cat Millie drink some. She looks like she's gained some weight since we took off. Everyone's kind of bummed about the beer situation, but it's all good. As soon as we land, we'll get some barley growing, and by next year, we'll be brewing our own. July 16th, Redacted. Jerry's dead. Something bumped into us during our sing-along. Jerry said it was probably just some space dust, but he wanted to go outside and check it out. He put on the spacesuit Susan made for him and climbed outside. He was on his way back in when something else bumped into us and he lost his grip. Susan and Sam were screaming as he just drifted away. I tried to turn around, but shit, man. I never learned how to drive, and these things handle like boats, even when they do have road underneath them. By the time we got to him, he was dead. Susan won't stop bawling. They were gonna get married as soon as we landed. I've got my license and all. I was gonna do the deed myself. We had to give her some pills to get her to sleep after I got us back on course. It's a good thing we're halfway there by now. The sooner we can get into this cramped little bus, the better. July 19th, Redacted Susan was dead when we woke up this morning. The needle was still on her arm. I don't know how she got that much junk on her with her. She never touched that shit before in her life. I played Amazing Grace on the guitar and said a little something while Sam put her out in the airlock. Maybe she'll find Jerry out there. 
August 23rd, Redacted. Something's wrong, man. We should have made it by now, but I haven't even seen Alpha Centauri out the window. Are we going the wrong way? Did we go too far? I can't make any sense of these star charts. Jerry was the expert in all this shit, I'm just a philosophy major. Sam and I have been getting sick too. I've been getting weaker and we've got these splotches all over our bodies. Sam is having trouble eating and he lost a tooth yesterday. I haven't seen the cat in days, but I can smell something real bad. I think she must have crawled behind something and died. I hope we make it soon. September 18th, Redacted. I can see the moon out the side window. Something's wrong, man. All this time out here and we are not even past the moon? Jerry must have fucked up the math. We'll never get out there in time. I don't even think we can get back home anymore. I closed all the curtains once I saw it. I can't let Sam know. He's not holding his food down anymore. I'm not much better myself. September 23rd, Redacted. I'm all alone now. Sam died this morning. He could barely sit up or see towards the end. He asked me if we were there yet. I told him, yeah man, we'll be there tomorrow, just get your rest. I don't have the heart to tell him the truth. He asked me to read him, and death shall have no dominion one last time. His eyes were closed by the time I finished. They never opened up again. I pushed him out the airlock after he was gone. There's not going to be anyone left to push me out. November 3rd, Redacted. The stars are so fucking beautiful out here, man. Thank you for listening to SCP-1958. If you enjoyed this SCP, please follow the link in the description, and like this article to support the author and the SCP Wiki as a whole.